And, you know, we've been talking about this for quite some time, waiting on that approval. But how does the FDA move from emergency use to fully approving use? You know, it's really the amount of data that they look through. So for emergency use, a lot of that data is around safety, efficacy, uh, how well is it working in those trials? When you get to full approval, it's more data on those things. But in addition, how is it manufactured? How is it transported? Things like that. Hundreds of thousands of pages of documents were reviewed uh, to get this full FDA approval, basically the most rigorous approval that you can get anywhere in the world on a medication or drug. So we're talking Pfizer for now, right? How close is Moderna in getting that full approval as well? You know, I think Moderna is just a little bit farther behind. Uh, Pfizer had submitted first. Uh, Pfizer is a little bit bigger company, so their ability to produce that data is a little bit easier. Uh, but all of us in healthcare do think Moderna will also, uh, at some point uh, in the future, get full FDA approval. Dr. Potoff, based on your experience, will this change people's mind in getting the vaccine? Have you had those type of conversations with patients? You know, I think for some patients uh, it will. You know, some patients were a little bit misled thinking that emergency use meant that the vaccine was experimental uh, or it wasn't fully studied or we couldn't trust the safety profile. Uh, you know, full FDA approval makes this vaccine just as safe as all the other vaccines that we're commonly used to getting. And for some people, that will make a difference. Uh, at the same time, I don't think FDA approval will have everyone who's unvaccinated signing up for appointment just yet. And just a quick reminder, I know we've been talking about booster shots as well. Are you recommending the immunocompromised get that booster shot or at least start that conversation with their doctor? Yeah, for sure. If you're, you know, immunocompromised uh, and you can figure out that definition, on the CDC website, it really is moderately or to severely immunocompromised. What we've learned is that for those specific people, a three shot series is better at creating antibodies than a two shot series. Uh, so for those folks who are immunocompromised, getting that third dose right now is a good idea. And I know there must be some people at home watching that have gotten the J&J, &J, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, and we haven't been hearing it in terms of, you know, full approval for that one. Do you know anything or has anything changed in terms of that vaccine? No, not yet. And I think, you know, why J&J &J is lagging is it was actually the last vaccine that was approved for emergency use. Uh, and, you know, it's the least used vaccine. So there's not as much data. But I do know that J&J &J is looking at the effects of two doses. What does that do to antibody levels, immunity? Uh, and as those data come in, uh, I'm sure those folks who've got a J&J &J vaccine will get updated on what the recommendation is as far as boosters. Do you need another shot? Do you need to switch to an mRNA vaccine? That's all forthcoming. And it's normal, Dr. Jeffrey Potoff, just as a quick reminder for data, for science to change. I know this has been also a big conversation. Things might change in the coming months. You know, absolutely. I think, you know, oftentimes when people experience science, uh, it's after we've had decades of experience, whether it's heart disease, hypertension, diabetes, but COVID-19 is a new disease. So what you're witnessing is, you know, how science is created. It's, you know, testing hypotheses and learning more as we go. Uh, people should be more worried if the data wasn't changing uh, than the fact that it is. The fact that it is means we're doing our jobs, we're reevaluating the data, and we're changing guidance based on knowing more. All right. Keep yourself informed and be patient. Thank you so much.